I was very fortunate as a kid. My father was a painter and I studied with him as a child when he was teaching art to people in the community. Also, at a young age, I started playing the piano. Art and music were kind of basic to my whole life. Between high school and art school, I built a floor loom and I started weaving. A very interesting experience for me was being up in Muskoka on Sparrow Lake, where Kenneth Mills was rehearsing with singers. It was the beginning of the Starscape singers as a group. He was opening, what he called opening voices of individuals there. And being present when some of that was happening was quite amazing because as Dr. Mills worked with these people, their voices would become much more flexible, their range would totally increase, and their volume could be soft or extremely loud. They seemed to be evolving in a conscious way too that was very much uh, discernible by the people who were listening and watching. Oftentimes there were rehearsals in Muskoka on Sparrow Lake and I started sketching the island that was out in the uh, lake there. And as I was walking around there, I would feel that I was uh, hearing the sound in my ears, in my head, in my body, under my feet, as I was walking because I was so imbued with this amazing sound that I had really never experienced before. As a result of that inspiration, of those early uh, experiences, I started weaving pieces. They were major pieces in a way because it would take me several months. And not only was I pulling in some of the ideas of the intensity and the color palette of this music, but I was trying all kinds of new ideas with using twills as a background. This is called a straight twill, and then you can reverse it, and you've got, already you've got V's happening. Or if they're happening the other way, you've got these A forms. But you can put this all together, and you can create diamonds. It is such an archaic weave in itself, reaching back into time. Every culture starts with plain weave, and the next weave they do is twill weave. I created these 12 initial pieces as inspired by the sound. It occurred to me, well, it really has so much to do with Kenneth Mills' work. I think I must, at some point, show these pieces to him. I was very excited because he was just thrilled and was flying around in his excitement. He said, oh, I want to give titles to these pieces. And then he'd go back and say, oh, this piece could have several titles. We're looking at this small island. You don't see the island, though, because there are so many mists here that are coming up here. And this is symbolic of the sun burning out the mists. The sun is victorious over the mists. Dr. Mills uh, brought musical ideas into some of these titles and of course all musical sound has harmonics and overtones and on a graph they can appear somewhat like this. The idea of sunrise plays in many of these pieces. It's an idea of a rainbow that's forming a kind of a cathedral form. It's interesting how using the word color and harmonics and other words are 
useful in describing art as well as music. This piece is also a landscape of sky and water. It feels like mountains and then going beyond something that's happening in the foreground so that you're moving through something into something happening in the back that is very luminous and very clear and very elevating. This piece to me always seems to say something about discipline. To a certain extent, in order to perceive what's happening in the music, I think one has to be already somewhat disciplined to be able to quietly be present. And there's almost a meditative, in the very good sense of meditation, that the music teaches you. This piece is called Reflection because it is a reflection and this is the island in Sparrow Lake. I think it has some of the excitement of the open voice. I some, sometimes feel like I'm breathing with the singers or that my voice is moving with the singers and being open myself and expanded. This piece, I feel, is really talking about incredible power and subtlety in the coloration, you might say, and the power in the stroke of the lightning. I stood over the dye pot and like a yard at a time of the yarn I put it into the dye pot so that the graduation of color would come as I wove it in the order that it was dyed. This one is called The Risen Fire in the Sea of Devotion. However, it's still that old lake in Muskoka, <laughs> but it's been reborn. I like to use the word bathed in the sound because when you're experiencing this choir while they're singing, you feel the energy of fire. The bird starts coming in here, which is at the very top, and it's almost like the bird is coming down, but in a way pulling all of this structure up. Somehow the repetition of these twill lines coming up and making these A forms create the whole structure. It has also something to do with the singers. They are all working together as a unit to create this one form under Dr. Mel's direction. Talking with Dr. Mills a little bit about this, what he is really speaking of here is the maintaining of your spiritual self in the midst of, you might say, everyday confusion and upset. This inverted V form, which is green, is that part which is unchanging. I wanted to bring about that idea of heat that we talk a bit about relative to the pyramid.
it was at this point where I felt I've been so excited by this sound and by the Starscape singers, and I've done like two years of work already on these pieces. I think that it's time that I show these to Dr. Mills and see what he feels about them, thinks about them. On another level, he said, I see six more pieces. You know, he said, I feel a progression of consciousness here, but he said, I think it could take it even farther. And so I said, okay, tell me, what are they? I tried to draw him out as much as possible because he would explain it in words and I wanted images more. The bird, once again, is coming in. It's moving down. And then you get the sense of the movement of the wings. This energy is backed up by the amethyst ray. You see the lightning stroke going across the top of this piece. And it, it really is a way that the two pieces are connected one to the other. These rays are forming the gold and the amethyst and creating at the bottom W-O-R-D. This piece is called the reception and you really can find the bird form in it again. It is really, however, a chalice This is a, like an infinity symbol, almost like a figure eight, and can suggest breathing in and breathing out. Every moment I will thank you. Embodied in here is also a balanced cross, and we see the X. Dr. Mills uses the X as a symbol for the unknown. This piece really embodies so many of the ideas that we've looked at before, and it kind of brings it all together into a symbolic finale here. I feel that I'm in the center of this piece where I am receiving this gift and the bird is descending, the sound is coming in and it's flapping its wings rhythmically. I thank you for listening to this Reading the titles as you look at the exhibition will help you to participate very directly in receiving this exhibition and learning more about what it has meant to me and hopefully to you. Thanks again.